Wallace here with your Monday video. Sorry about the lighting. It's a really weirdly oddly sunny day and it's like reflecting off of my white carpet up into my face. So that's why I look like I'm like sitting here holding a flashlight. So I apologize for that in advance. Today I'm telling you about some of my favorite books and these are like favorites of all time. People often ask me what my favorite book is and I get a little stuck because I'll forget because a lot of my favorite books I haven't read recently. Um, although some of them I read over and over so I've read more recently than others uh, but also I just get stuck because I have a few favorite books and some of them are newer than others so usually I'll just go to my go-to ones that have been like favorites for a long time so I thought I would just look at my bookshelf pull out the ones that are truly favorites like I would recommend to everybody um, well not everybody because you can't really recommend a book to everybody that's like acting like everybody's exactly the same that I would highly recommend to lots of people who have tastes like mine <laughs> and um, these are books that I would read over and over and over again so the first one I'm going to share with you is Julie and Julia and I know so many of you are going to groan because this book was just not that popular I know it got made into a movie and it got popular right around then because people wanted to read the book before the movie but um I loved it I, I really, I liked it a lot the first time, I loved it the second time, and then I've read parts of it through again that I've loved. Anyway, I also love the movie. I went for like a year, maybe might have even been two, where I like literally watched this movie to fall asleep to every single night. This is my comfort zone. This book, that movie are like so much comfort to me. Um, Nora Ephron's involved in it part of that is like that's part of it like the movie part um and then this book I mean the book is a little bit grittier than the movie obviously there's like a not grittier but yeah it's a little grittier her personality is a little grittier in the book because she's actually writing about herself and they kind of rounded out the edges and like made it cutesy in the in the film and I know she was annoying to some people but it's way more cutesy than it was in the book um I love the fact that she took on this project and that changed her life and so many people have been inspired by that, whether they admit it or not. She was blogging at the very beginning of blogging when like people didn't know what blogging was. And she created an entirely new career and life out of that. And that's what people try to do on the regular now, using blogs, Instagram, etc. They're using them to get like book deals. They're using them to try to get like, you know, their products in different places. Like they're, they're doing it a similar thing that she did that Julie did um maybe not even realizing it so this is just an inspirational story in general and it was just on the early end of it and I love it and I love how how brave she was because not everybody would do that and it's not like she had a ton of money to fall back on she didn't she just wanted to love what she was doing and I like that she wasn't even trying to make it into something else it was purely out of the joy and love of cooking and wanting to learn how to do that better. So I loved this book. This is no surprise if you've been following me at all for any length of time, if you've been reading my book riot posts, if you've looked at my Instagram, if you looked at my old blog, if you've anything, I've, I'm sure I've mentioned it in, in videos as well. 84 Sharon Cross Road. Mwah. It's I've met read this multiple times. It's so short. You can literally read it in like an hour maybe longer depending on how slow of a reader you are but it's epistolary so it's you know it's really not a hard read if you are a book lover this is your book this is like all about the the days when there was no like quick shops to go down to no amazon obviously to order your book from like you had to like send away for books you had to like look at bookstores and ads because if the book store near you didn't have it you had to find it at a different bookstore and you wrote to them so this is about a woman in New York who writes to a bookstore in London and the bookseller and the woman in New York, Helene Hoff, who's a, who's a writer, become friend, pen pals and friends and it's their story about uh, bonding over their love of books. This is my newest edition. This is The Vanderbeekers of 141st Street by Karina Young Glaser from Book Riot. And um, granted, I might have a special place in my heart for this book. Uh, Karina and I obviously have been writing for Book Riot for a while. We finally met in real life a few years ago. We talked a lot about um, 
kids and reading because I had just had my son and she has two children who are avid readers and I like that was my goal like her kids walk around like literally like if you look at her Instagram account which is um Karina is reading and writing I think I'll, I'll put it below like you'll see pictures of her kids walking down the street in New York City reading like that's what I want to happen with my son Anyway, this book is about a multiracial family that lives in Harlem that's about to be evicted from their brownstone. And they've lived there for a very long time and they don't know exactly what they're gonna do. So the kids come up with some plans to try to convince the super to let them stay. And it is, I love this book because it's about this lovely quirky family. Like, like all the kids have these great personalities and they all have like, distinct personalities and there's four of them and then mama and papa also are great characters um and they just have a really loving sweet family so i love that part about it i also love how like independent and imaginative these kids are like i was actually interested in the ideas they were coming up with and wanted to hear more about how they were gonna you know save their house or if they were gonna save their house because that's really not clear until like close to the end and then what happens will surprise you you're not gonna guess it I didn't guess it uh, and I definitely got teary-eyed so I have a box of, of Kleenex with you it's such a sweet novel and I'm so excited there is more coming and the next one is coming out this fall and I'm so thrilled because I just got the news from Karina that my copy is gonna be on its way soon so I'll have more to report about that and you can follow me at at book it like a mother on Instagram to see when I get that one and and uh, how excited I am not to mention how gorgeous are these covers and then also so this is another one of my favorite things when I was younger I used to I still do actually love like maps like this where you could like see what's happening in the book and like I would sit there and just stare at, at it and like try to figure out all the places that they would go in the book and then inside there are illustrations like this and I love this kind of stuff, you guys. I love it, love it, love it, in, especially in my lower grade novels because it takes me back to loving it when I was reading these for the first time. So as you know, I'm not a huge fan of YA, but I do love middle grade novels. But it's like, I think that was the part of my life when I just like fell so hardcore in love with reading that I just, it's a comfort zone for me. So I highly recommend this one for adults and for kids. And also hot tip, if you can get your hands on the first copies of this one, like this one probably not anymore, but like the next couple that are coming out, do it because Karina is killing it out there uh, on the author circuit and these books are really popular. I just saw it on the Strands bestseller table for the middle grade novels. So grab those first edition copies. I don't think you're gonna be sorry later on. The most of Nora Ephron because I love Nora Ephron. Love Nora Ephron. She, like, if you've heard me talk about her a million times before, I know she's gotten me through really hard times. I've heard that she was the kind of person that if you literally walked up to her on the street and said, I have this issue and I want your advice on it, she would give you advice. And I would do a lot of things to go get Nora Ephron's advice on some things. Um, she was a badass lady. She really, really was. Not only was she a talented writer, because if you read her, I mean, her essays are so my style, and uh, it fits with like some of my other favorites that I'm about to get to. Like, she has a very conversational style of nonfiction writing, and um, and if you have not listened to Heartburn with Meryl Streep reading it on from Audible or whatever, I mean, I think it's everywhere. Like any kind of audiobook you can get from. Heartburn is her novel about the split up with her ex-husband because he was cheating on her when she was pregnant with her second kid and what happens and how she finds out and how she leaves him. I was laughing so hard reading that book. It was so cathartic for me. And I adore listening to Meryl Streep do, Meryl, do Nora Ephron. And Meryl, of course, played her in the movie version of that book. So many things. Also, there's like the amazing HBO documentary done by her son, which you should totally watch. It's called Everything is Copy, and it's all about Nora's um, ideology about writing. Everything is copy. So take your life and put that into word. Like, that is your resource. So this is the book that has, um, and I just grabbed this one because it has so much of her work in it. Really, I have a, a selection of Nora Ephron books. Like, I have her a collection of it. Um, 
this one has when harry met sally it has the entire script for when harry met sally it has the entire book of heartburn in here it has all of her essays in here um it, it has a bunch of other things it also has a last play that she wrote called lucky guy i think that was that was the last thing that she worked on tom hanks starred in it so i think it was it was on stage it was a stage performance um anyway this is a good place to start if you are into Nora Ephron or if you want to get somebody who loves Nora Ephron a good gift. This is a great one. And there's nobody like Nora Ephron to like write stories about life, like real life and like make you laugh about even the hard stuff. Like her essays are just so good. Next is Play It As It Lays by Joan Didion. This is the only novel of hers that I've read and I soaked it up. I love this novel but you have to be in a mood where you're just like looking for sparse you're looking for a little bit dark you're just in a mood i don't really know how else to describe it like a mood to go driving out to the desert probably smoking some cigarettes and being a little like melancholy and like somewhat dramatic you know we all have those moods right even if we don't do it even if you're like smoking grows whatever you know what I mean. Some big things and big topics are talked about in this book, including divorce, suicide, abortion. And this book is not recent. <laughs> like, so the fact that she was talking about all these things is really interesting, but it still applies. It's just kind of like a timeless story. And it's beautiful and it's really subtle. So some of the things you're going to read and you're going to miss them and you're going to be like, whoa, back up what just happened and you're going to read it again and be like how did she write it like that how did her brain decide to write it it's amazing it's so amazing it makes me very excited because i love joan didion and i love her writing also it has the best last page of any book ever in my opinion which you will not get if you haven't read it so you have to read it to get this last page and it's like the last three lines in particular are my favorite I'm not even gonna read them to you. You have to go get this book somewhere, the library, bookstore, whatever, to find out what they are. So those are my favorites. If you have any questions about them, you can post them below. I will try my hardest to remember to come back and answer questions. Um, you can also find me on Instagram, at bookitlikeamother, um, and I can't answer questions about them there because I actually just posted a picture of all these books there today, so you could actually ask me any questions on that post. Um, and. I can answer them there as well. And I will see you guys next Monday. Until then, happy reading.